In this JavaScript programming tutorial, we are going to walk through how we can build out a function to test to see if the values of two objects are equal or if they're not. Now, you may think that this doesn't actually need a function because if you're coming from another programming language or just from a pure common sense standpoint, what we're going to walk through seems like it should happen automatically, but this is one of the more tricky parts of JavaScript. And so I'm going to walk through first why this type of process is needed. So I'm going to create a couple objects. So I'm going to say const object one, and then this object is going to have a name property. And then let's also give it an age. Now, if I copy this and simply name it something different, we can see that these values are completely identical. Every part of them, the data type, the number of keys, and their values are identical. So you would think that if you did something like this, or you said object one triple equals object two, you would think that this would come and say that these items are equal but they're not. And if you think that, okay, maybe this is one of those problems where you need to only use the double equals for equivalence, because remember in JavaScript, three equals means full complete equivalence, and the two is a little bit of a lighter equivalence, this is still false. And so the reason for this is because when you compare objects, the way that JavaScript looks at them is it takes the object as a whole. It actually ignores the value when it comes to equivalence. It simply looks at these objects and it says, okay, this is object one. We have it stored in one spot in memory and its name is object one. Now we have object two. This is stored in a different place in memory and it has a different variable name. So there is no way of looking at these and saying that they are the same thing. And so this can be a very tricky kind of concept. And the reason why I'm creating this video is because later on, I'm going to be creating another video that needs to know if it's a part of a larger algorithm and a coding interview exercise. And you need to know if two objects have the same values or not. And so we need to build a function that tests for that. And if you have two objects like this, it needs to say that they're true. And so that's that's what we're going to build out in this guide. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to call the function that we're going to be building so that we can debug it as we're creating it. So I'm going to call this function is equal, and it's going to take two arguments. It's going to take the object one and object two. Right now it's giving an error, obviously, because we haven't created the function. Let's come up to the very top of the file and let's start doing that. So I'm going to give us some space right here and I'm going to create a arrow function. So I'll say const is equal and this is going to take the two arguments. So we'll just call them object one and object two. You could name these anything you want. but I think that's nice and descriptive and this will be an arrow function. And now the very first thing that I want to test for here, or I should say the very first thing that I want to grab is the set of keys. So inside the object, we have these keys of name and of age. So let's grab those for each one of the objects. So I'm going to say const object one keys, and we'll set this equal to the object class dot keys, and then pass in object one. And then we're going to do the same thing for object two. And if you want to see what these values are, you can see right there, we get an array back for name and age. And we know that both of these are identical. We're getting the same name and the same age because we have two objects that we're passing in right now that have the same keys. Now, if you were to change one of these, so instead of age, if you were to say something like height, now you can see that object two now is showing height instead of age. So th that's what we're looking for right there. And let me get rid of the debugging output. And now let's add our first test. We're going to put in a conditional here 
And the most logical approach, if I were approaching a question like this, would be to first see if we have the same number of keys. Because if these numbers are different at all, then it means that our objects are not the same. So this is a way of quickly getting rid of any objects that are not going to be the same. So in other words, if we have a, the first object here actually does include height, just like this, and we were to say, okay, the height is five feet or something like that, then we want these to immediately, and we want this function to immediately say that these objects are not the same because we have one item that has, or one object that has an extra key. So let's first test for that because that's a nice, easy thing to check for. So if I say if, object one keys dot length, if that is not equal to the object two keys dot length, then we want to return false. So what this means is this is going to break out of the entire function, no matter what else we put down below it. And it's going to say, nope, we know that these objects are not the same. So let's save this, come all the way down to the bottom. And you can see right now we're getting undefined. We have object one and object two not being the same. And it's because I have a little typo here. This needs to be object two keys. Now if I hit save, come back down, there we go. We're getting false because these two are not equal. Now I'm going to just get rid of this and we're getting undefined now because we are not returning true or anything. This first condition is simply going to return false based on the length. And this is an approach that I take as I'm building out pretty much any kind of function is I put the, the easiest kinds of conditions right at the top, especially the ones that are probably going to be triggered the most often. So if you're building this type of function out, then what's most likely going to happen is that the items are not going to be equal. And so you want to be able to check for that right away so you don't waste any other processing time or power for any of the other conditionals. Now this next one is a little bit trickier. So now that we know that we have two objects that are of the exact same length, now we need to go and check the values. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use a for of loop. So I'm gonna say for and then let, and you can name this variable anything you want. You could call it i or x. I personally like to be more descriptive, so I'm going to say object key. So this is just a variable name. So I'm going to say for object key of object one keys. I'm going to loop over this and I'm going to place another conditional in here. So I'm going to say if object one and then object key. So what exactly am I doing here? Well, this is a object and you know that you can grab an object's key by passing in that key name. So this is all I'm doing right here and let me just comment this out really quick. So all I'm doing is it's the same thing as if I said object one and I passed in name just like that. That's returning that object with a key of name. So that's all I'm doing is I'm checking to see if I pass in a key such as name and if that key and or I should say if that value is not equal to object two and object two key then I want to return false. Okay so let's test this out coming down here if I change object two to be Tiffany now you can see that this returns false because the name is different. And you could test this on the other items as well. So if this age was 33, you can see that that is false. Now we have both of our checks in place that we are looking for. Now there's one other item at the very end. If it passes both of those tests, we want to say that we return true. So now if we come down, we can see that these objects and this equivalence test is working and it's working perfectly. So the double equals and twi triple equals will not work, but our little is equal function here works very nicely. Now, 
I want to add a caveat because I'm assuming if you're watching this video, there's a chance that you came to it because you're trying to debug a situation where you have two objects and you're testing to see if they're equal and then you discover that double equals and those kinds of tools are not working. And so that's what, why you're going through this. Well, what we just built, this function right here does work for shallow conditionals. And so what that means is that objects like this, where we have only one level, such as having name, age, and the value is just going to be something like a string, an integer, a boolean, anything like that. This function will work for that. But now where it will not work is if you have other data structures. So let's go through an example of that. So let's say that we have something new added here. So what if we had favorites and favorites, we might have food here and then we have pizza. So now we've added another object, a nested object. And if I add this, then you're going to see that we're getting false. Even though these two do have the same values, we're actually running into the exact same situation we had in the beginning where we had the equivalence that was being triggered and or not triggered when it should be. So how do you circumnavigate that? Well, there's a couple ways. One, you could keep on adding to this function. So you could check to see all of the other data structures. You could check to see if the key represents a value that's an array or if it represents a another object or anything like that. And that would be fine, but it's not what my recommendation would be because as you can see, we've already had to cover a number of edge cases just in this building out this small example. So what I would recommend is if you are using something where you just need shallow equivalence, and there are many times where that is the case. And in fact, when I implement and call this function in a future video, uh, all we need to know is a, if a shallow object is equal to another shallow object. But if you do need something a little bit more comprehensive, then I recommend using a library for that. So the library that would work perfectly for that is the Lodash library because they actually have a function that does everything we've talked about, plus it works for deeply nested types of situations. So they have this is equal function and then you can pass it to objects and it will tell you if they are equal by value even if they have multiple levels of nesting. So let, I'll even show you, we can test this out. I'll click try in REPL here and let me come and let's copy our objects. So I'm going to copy both of these objects and we'll paste them in. So get rid of these ones that they had and now let's use our own. So we'll say object one and object two. And if you run this, you can see, oh, we have a reference error. Uh, oh, it's because I didn't get rid of all of their output. Hit run now and you can see it's true. So what we're doing here is we're calling the Lodash library. It brings in is equal. Now we can simply pass two objects and you could have as many levels as you want here and it will perform what we talked about. It'll cover all those edge cases. So if you're trying to do this in a React project or a Vue or any kind of JavaScript application, my recommendation would be to use a tool like this. Now, if you're trying to pass a coding interview question and you're trying to do something such as build out some kind of counting object, and that's what I'm building this for, for a future video, if you want to do that, then this situation and this solution will work perfectly for you. So in review, we have built out a is equal function here in JavaScript that can check to see if two shallow, shallow objects are equivalent to each other.